One of the new coming-of-age film dramas that's quickly gaining traction today is The Fablemans, and for all the right reasons. For today's video, we'll be sharing with you the true story behind that amazing The Fablemans cameo. Plus, get to know The Fablemans costume designer Mark Bridges as he reveals his love of sneaking subtle Easter eggs in the movie. All this and more, so keep watching today's video. One of the greatest cinematic cameos is saved for the very end of Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans, and it certainly has a ring of truth. Now, spoiler alert, today's video contains major spoilers from the movie, so consider yourselves warned. Are you interested in meeting the greatest film director to have ever lived? In any situation, that would be a heavy topic, but in Steven Spielberg's most recent film, The Fablemans, it carries much more significance. Since the movie is a semi-autobiographical description of the renowned director's own adolescent years, it offers a unique opportunity to get to know Steven Spielberg in real life, or at least in the director's own imagination. Even if the movie uses a little bit of artistic license, the protagonist is named Sammy Fableman rather than Steven Spielberg. After all, anyone can tell it's a reflection by an author in his prime. Additionally, Spielberg is often regarded as the best filmmaker to have ever lived. To this day, many kids and adults still regard Jaws, E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Jurassic Park as touchstones. We grew up watching these movies. Still, Spielberg? In a scene that makes us genuinely giddy. Spielberg underlines the fact that he grew up idolizing other filmmakers by including one of the most iconic cameos in movie history. Sam Fableman, a college-aged character played by Gabrielle LaBelle, encounters one of his heroes, the unflappable and stoic John Ford, in the film's closing moments. And if moviegoers look, they could spot David Lynch, another legendary director, hiding behind the eye patch and the chewed-up cigar. That's correct. In a Steven Spielberg film, the filmmaker of The Elephant Man and Mulholland Drive portrays the creator of The Searchers. The scene takes place after Sammy had left college to pursue a career in movies. He begins by working for Hogan's Heroes co-creator Bernard Fine, who himself functions as a kind of cameo for Felicity star Greg Grunberg as the assistant to an assistant to an assistant. Ford is referred to as the greatest director of all time by old Bernie, who also leads Sam through the hallway. In the confusing sequence that follows, Ford's secretary warns Sam he could have to wait all day for Jack, and then advises him to take off his tie so he can stay in the old man's company for five minutes rather than just one. When Lynch, playing Ford, finally enters the room, he is visibly intoxicated, irritable, and violent. He assesses Sam and commands the boy to identify the horizon on each western theme picture in his office. According to The Beard himself, the incredible episode is largely accurate to what actually occurred when Spielberg and Ford first met. In a tale Spielberg has retold numerous times, young Steven once met Ford and was given the task of identifying the horizon in several paintings. Spielberg met Ford when he was just 15 years old, although in real life he was even younger than the 18-year-old Sammy Fableman. This odd meeting occurred because one of Spielberg's cousins happened to be friends with the co-creator of Hogan's Heroes. This places the incident in or around 1962, which indicates that it was most likely soon after the release of Ford's final and greatest work, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. In The Fablemans, Sammy attends the movie that reveals Ford's older, more introspective, and more pessimistic vision of the Old West. Ford, of course, already had a nearly 50-year career by that point and was already regarded as one of the greatest Western directors of all time. However, many of his early westerns were romantic fantasies, while some occasionally displayed strong racism toward Native Americans. Only a few of the iconic odors he directed include Stagecoach, 1939, My Darling Clementine, 1946, Fort Apache, 1948, and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, 1949. These films influenced young directors who grew up on them, with sensibilities as different as Spielberg and Lynch, and helped establish the cinematic language for the West, chase scenes, action sequences, and how mythological American iconography was interpreted on screen. It's important to remember that Ford didn't just produce westerns. How Green Was My Valley, 1941, felt like a makeup after the traditionally conservative and patriotic Ford soberly adapted John Steinbeck's anti-capitalist The Grapes of Wrath in 1940 
which did not win the biggest Oscars of its night. He won one of many Best Director Oscars for that film, but it felt like a makeup. Ford subsequently got weary of his own myth-making after serving as a World War II filmmaker, where he was effectively a battle photographer. The Searchers, arguably his best Western, is a critique of American settlers' prejudice in the frontier, 1956. And in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, Jimmy Stewart's portrayal of an old West legend is exposed as a liar, a guy who claimed responsibility for romantic rival John Wayne's killing of the outlaw Liberty Valance, played by Lee Marvin. It's difficult to determine if a 15-year-old Spielberg was aware of these inconsistencies and paradoxes in Ford's persona, but he quickly discovered that the Golden Age director was actually just as erratic in his politics. Spielberg claims that during his real-life meeting with Ford, the 68-year-old Cyclops Ford arrived inebriated, smoking a cigar, and covered in lipstick kiss marks, which his secretary hastily wiped off before Spielberg entered the office of the legend. Ford was sitting on the desk when the young candidate entered, and he asked, So I hear you want to be a picture maker. He then demanded that Spielberg locate the horizon, as seen in The Fablemans. Ford said that Spielberg would make a decent painter if he can discern the aesthetic of the horizon as being at the top or bottom of a frame, but not directly through the center or if he can understand why it's there and why it's not there. Although it's not the approach that the now elder statesman Steven Spielberg would adopt with younger directors, one gets the impression that he's very pleased with the fact that in 1962, he received one of Pappy Ford's infamous F-bombs thrown his way. For the record, another significant distinction between the real world and the Fablemans is that Spielberg did not launch his acting career on Hogan's Heroes. After taking the tour once, Spielberg allegedly talked his way into the Universal Picture Pictures lot and pretended to work there for more than half a year before people realized he wasn't an employee. This is one of Spielberg's own personal urban legends. However, the younger man's swagger secured him a position at the studio where he quickly rose through the ranks to become a television director, albeit on Rod Serling's Night Gallery in 1969 as opposed to Hogan's Heroes. In other related news, Mark Bridges, the costume designer for the Fablemans, enjoys slipping in little Easter eggs. You might be able to find the minor Easter eggs that costume designer Mark Bridges hid in the allegorical clothes worn by Michelle Williams and Paul Dano in Steven Spielberg's Oscar-nominated The Fablemans if you watch it very carefully. The legendary costume designer behind movies like Joker, Phantom Thread, Licorice Pizza, The Artist, There Will Be Blood, and Silver Linings Playbook took great care to honor Steven Spielberg's parents by making subtle nods to their individual senses of style in everything from turquoise earrings to a special bolo tie. The Fablemans stars Paul Dano as Bert Fableman, who is based on Spielberg's father Arnold, and Michelle Williams as Mitzi Fableman, a fictionalized version of Spielberg's real-life mother Leah. The film chronicles Spielberg's early years, from his move to California and pursuit of his passion for filmmaking to witnessing his parents' divorce. There are photos of Arnold, the father, wearing a bolo tie that has a little scorpion embedded in lucite. And I actually happened to own one, so I was able to use it on Paul, the costume designer related to Movie Maker in an interview. Those little Easter eggs I love putting in there, just for a quiet sense of recognition for Stephen and his sisters to notice that we're dropping in touches of his parents. On Michelle Williams, Bridges had a blast reenacting Spielberg's mother's distinctive sense of style. He admitted that he attempted to use a pair of his mother's exquisite and stylish earrings on Michelle. He had his sister Sue lend the earrings to him, and he also had the earrings in his possession. Sadly, Bridges claimed that because they would somewhat detract from Michelle, they weren't really photogenic. He admitted that they actually chose an option that was motivated by Leah's adoration of Southwest turquoise jewelry. They were able to find items that were extremely beautiful and ornate, but less distracting for photography because she created jewelry and other items. I always have to streamline my design so that they don't take you out of the scene, the renowned costume designer said. With that, we're wrapping up today's episode about The Fablemans. Have you watched the movie yet? If you have, which is your favorite scene in it? Let us know in the comments section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like this. See you next time, and thanks for watching.